Hey everyone and welcome back to Perry Plays Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode we made our way to Pewter City and we also added Fran the level 3 Pikachu to our party along with Alan the kick-ass Bulbasaur. But now we're gonna head straight into the Gaim and try and take down Brock. Oh yeah, there's this guy at the beginning of every gym. No, I don't wanna... I don't... Oh, okay, so... This guy's going to tell you even if you say no, so... Mm, wonderful. Let's just head up here and face off against this first guy. 10,000 light years from facing Brock. Now this kid either doesn't understand the concept of light years, or he's over-exaggerating by, like, loads. <laughs> But this guy's got bog standard rock Pokemon. He has a Geodude. Wonderful. Fran will be absolutely no use, but we send her out first so that she can get the experience. It's a good trick. Every Pokemon player pretty much knows it. And if you don't, then start using it, because it's pretty damn handy. Alan, being the kick ass guy that he is, just completely devastates. And of course, Fran goes up to level 4. Very nice. Only oh, he's got Sandrew! Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, let's get Fran back out here. She'll be no, out, no use whatsoever, but good to get the experience again. Um, yeah, Sandrew's a ground Pokemon. I completely forgot this guy had one. I thought he'd have another, like, Geodude or something. That's cool! It's also fine, because Alan's also super effective against ground. So, there you go. Super effective. Down goes Sandrew. And Fran grows to level 5. Nice. And Fran grows to level six, even but Adlet. Jesus. <laughs> okay, I caught Fran at the right time. Light years isn't time. It measures. Di okay, so you were just over exaggerating, like a mother bitch. Like, cause that is clearly not light years distance to Brock. That's like two steps. <sighs> so I went and healed up for the main battle against Brock, who can't stop saying rock hard, making him sound like a porn star, but ugh, yes, fine Brock, yes, I guessed that, all your Pokemon are the rock type, thank you so much for that, yes, 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 stop bragging, honour is spelled wrong, <laughs> um, he seems to be a lot more dickish than he is in the TV series, but... He's also wearing different clothes, so I assume he's gone full douche for this game. So, no qualms about taking him down. Send Fran out first. Level 6 Fran against his level 12 Geodude. And of course we switch out straight to Alan. Go on, Alan. Lay the smack down. Roll with the punches. Let forth a mighty vine roll, and it goes down in one hit. Pa -pa -ha. Nice. Your friend didn't actually level up. Oh, must be pretty near the beginning of level 6, I guess. Level 14. And he doesn't learn anything, okay. He doesn't evolve at 14. No, I think he does that later. Okay. Up next, Onyx. Massive. Like, the sprites here give you no real indication of just the sheer size of some of these Pokemon. That, that Onyx is like... I can't remember the exact length it is, but it's like... A seriously high, like, it, it would be a story tall or something if it was laid out, or, or more. It's huge. And it still gets taken down by one Vine Whip from Alan, because Alan's the man. And Fran grows to level 7. Which is just fantastic. Frantastic, you could say. <laughs> and, of course, we get the Boulder Badge from Rock. Very nice. Nice little uh, reward, and we get the little victory music. Na -na -na -na. So, very nice. <laughs> and we can now use Flash outside of battle. We don't have Flash at the moment, but I'm sure we'll get that at some point. Oh, oh and we also get TMs from the gym leaders. Now, here's the thing. In these more recent games, we find out that TMs are essentially stored on discs. And um, you see the disc when you t teach the TM to a Pokemon. It shows up, goes over the Pokemon, blah blah blah, little animation. 
But how does the Pokemon read the disc? And this got me thinking, because Pokemon can also be downloaded and uploaded onto PCs. So are Pokemon actually like living creatures, or were they artificially created as like computer programs that somehow gained sentience and made their way into the real world? This gives a whole lot of um, credibility to the whole Porygon story. People who don't know what Porygon is, it's a digital Pokemon. And in an episode you find out that he's essentially a purely digital Pokemon that only exists in digital space. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, it's one of Professor Oak's aides. Oh, no, he's got something in. Yes! We get the running shoes about bloody time! Oh, I hated in the old games where you didn't get the running shoes for ages and you had to walk everywhere, but this is fantastic. Oh, there's a letter. There's a running shoes. Beloved chat. Should we Mum? You do care! Mum! Okay, that's enough of that. But now, yes, we've got the running shoes, which work like that. Hold down B and you can... Everywhere. But, um... Yeah, maybe Porygon was the first Pokemon created, which is why it's so crude and digitized. And they just got more and more complex, because maybe the system took over and started doing it themselves. Which is... which would be amazing! And then they just got, like, broadcast somehow into the real world. That's a theory to look into. But anyway... Lass, Janice, here with a Pidgey, that Fran completely devastated, because Electric is super effective against flying. Which is great, and Fran learned Thunder Wave, which is also great. Great, great, great. <laughs> oh, another Pidgey. Excellent, this will be the first battle that Fran can actually take care of on her own. Over with the Thundershock. Mm, oh, it was a critical hit first time, wasn't it? Damn. And used Gust, which is crap, against Fran. So we'll uh, completely devastate with another Thundershock. Papow! Fran dusting her hands, walking off, not even looking at the badass explosion or something. <sighs> you, don't, you shouldn't be staring if you don't want to battle. It's weird what some of these trainers say, like, once you've beat them. Oh, this guy was in Viridian Forest. Lovely. You know, I've never actually checked if this was a guy who was in... Brilliant Forest, but Bugcatcher Colton, that doesn't sound familiar. So, not entirely sure there. Ooh, Thundershock does a fair bit of damage. Go tackle him. Aha! There we see Static in action, because Caterpie used a move that would physically connect with Fran. There was a chance that they would be paralyzed thanks to Static. That happened right there. So, that's static in action, I guess. <sighs> I'm really excited about this digital Pokemon idea. Like, TMs are CDs, and you can upload and download them. It's weird. I think I'm onto something here, and I would love to <laughs> investigate more and come up with more crackpot theories. And I probably will. So, watch this space, I guess. And Weedle's not doing anything particularly useful, so Fran, let's just keep going with the old dickery. Har har har. <laughs> and a poison sting, lovely. Oh good, and Fran avoided getting poisoned. We haven't seen a uh, poisoning on this series yet. But I'm sure it'll happen at some point. And another Caspi, nothing interesting. <sighs> So yeah, I think I got Fran at the right time, because in previous playthroughs I've gone back when I was much later in the game and picked up a Pikachu. But of course it's level 3 at the time, so you've got to train up to whatever level you're at. Usually, I'm usually around 20-something, so it takes an age. I've got her now, and she's already level 9, Alan's level 14. It's not that much difference, and I think Fran's probably going to level up to level 10. And there's a lot of enemies throughout this uh, bit just here that I'm going through now where Frank can hold her own like she is doing. And you can always just head straight back to the Pokemon Center, heal up like I have, and head straight back out. So it's 
It's probably good if you want a Pikachu to pick one up there. It can take a bit of time to find, but worth it, I think. Oh, excellent, it's the Shorts Kid. Oh, I remember running into this guy in the first game and I just thought what weirdo he was because he just seemed to just really love shorts. Like, an unnatural amount. Youngster Ben, that's it, that's his name. Wonderful. <laughs> I think he's got a Rattata. Lovely. Ooh, a Rattata that knows Quick Attack, which does a fair bit of damage. That's, uh... It's not too good. Oh, come on, be nice. Hmm. If he uses quick... Yes, okay. Frank got in first. He didn't use quick attack again. Good. Whew. Little, uh... Intense there. Oh, and he's got Ekans. Ekans, Pokemon we haven't seen yet. There he is. Of course, Ekans' his name is Snake Backwards, so... He thought long and hard about that name. But Ekans also popularized in the series, used by... Jesse in Team Rocket. I have to think about that, which I'm kind of ashamed by because I used to love the Pokemon series and I should be able to tell you that right off the top of my head. Ah well. And there's Poison Sting. Ekans is a poison type. I can't remember if it's a, it's a poison normal or just a poison. I think it's poison and normal. But don't quote me on that. As I said, I can't remember much about these games, so I'm just going off what I train ingrained into my memory from back in the day. But, there we go. There's Shorts loving youngster Ben defeated. Done. And just cut ahead there because I went and healed and came back. Um, I'm going to be fighting every one of these trainers just because it's good experience. So, I heavily advise that. Don't skip trainers because, uh, Especially if you're going to be running through these areas later in the game. It's a right pain in the ass when someone with a level 10 Rattata wants to challenge you when you've got like level 40 whatevers. So, yeah. Just do it. It's good experience for the time and you might as well do it now rather than later. And this Rattata is proving to be fairly... Okay, he's not quite as useless as I thought he was going to be. Lovely. She, sorry. I always call everything he. That's what I default to, apparently. Sorry, I'm not sexist. I'm just used to saying that because I used to have all male Pokemon. And friends learning quick attack. Right, now I can show you how to forget a move. And I love how growl and tail whip both include like growling in a cute way or wags its tail cutely. So I don't get how cute things decrease attack and defense. Well, then again, I suppose if you look at a kitten and it's being all cute, you never expect it when it starts clawing your eyes out. Hmm. Maybe there's something to that. But anyway, Last Sally now sending out a Nidoran female that we saw at the beginning of the game. And let's heal Fran up. Can't be bothered to change out. Might as well give Fran the experience. Nidoran female. <laughs> I love that sprite. Just because it's bah. Nidoran female bah. <laughs> oh, I wish it knew Hyper Beam, just so it can be, oh, I'm a fire in Maloza! <laughs> but, seems like it hasn't really done a lot. The Nidorans are pretty good. They're again, uh, poison, I think poison normal, or poison ground, not sure. But they're pretty good. Especially the evolutions. I believe Nidoran male and his evolutions are more attack based, whereas Nidoran female and her evolutions are more defense based. Um, I don't know the exact differences, like the um, proper stat number differences, but that's what I understand is the case. So, yeah. Okay, poison. Ah! I said we were going to encounter poisoning, and there it is! So at the end of each turn, uh, Fran will now get hurt by poison damage. Kind of annoying, and hopefully I can beat this guy and all his various Pokémon before Fran dies. And he's got four. Okay, it does three damage each time, so I should be okay, depending on... Oh yeah, I should be okay if he's got another Weedle and Caterpie, if there's something else, I'm not sure. But it's a bug catcher. 
How the hell hard can it be? <laughs> okay. Let's quick attack in action. Pow! -pow. Quick attack uh, makes you go first. Unless they also use quick attack and their Pokemon is faster. So, that's how that works. Oh, he's got a Kakuna. Hmm. How much does this Thundershock do? Oh, yeah, should be fine. Because Kakuna uses Harden, which increases defense, but that doesn't affect special attack, which I believe Thundershock is. So, that will effectively do nothing. So, Kakuna, you're screwed, you're dead. Friends level 12, get a bit more health, which is always nice. And he's got a Metapod. Thought so, he had the Weedle and the Kakuna, now he had a Caspi, and Metapod right there. Friends level 12, come on, we can do this, we can beat this Metapod before you die. Okay, yes, yes, we should have this. Come on, come on. Should go down to four HP. Yes, okay. And Metapod's down. Fran wins and gets all the experience. Juicy, juicy experience. <laughs> but um, this is what poison does to you outside of battle. Oh, you hold on. Oh. And Fran faints. The number of times it goes is, uh, well, directly correlates to how much HP you've got left. It did it four times because Fran had four HP. So after that was spent, she fainted. That's how that works. It's a pain when you don't, as I said before, when you don't have an antidote and you're in the middle of nowhere and you have virtually no Pokemon left. It is devastating when that happens on your last Pokemon and it sends you back to the last Pokemon Center, especially if you're trying to get through a cave, which I believe we might be heading towards. A bit of a, a, bit of a hint at what's to come. Hintity hint 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 Peru. Okay. Another pretty boring battle. Let's let's finish it with a quick attack. Oh a crit attack. No, quick attack, that was terrible. It's been a been a fairly long day. <laughs> but trying to think what my next Pokemon might be. Because I've got Fran. Good addition to the team. Electric type, so not that many. Uh, well, that's the thing with a uh, double type Pokemon, you sometimes run into problems with uh, double weaknesses or they're weak to more things. With Fran, she's just electric, so shouldn't be affected by quite as much stuff. But uh, there's another one that wears shorts. God, I have no idea. Have I fought this guy before? Or did I just completely forget about this other shorts-wearing guy? Youngster Calvin. With a Spearo? A level 14? If I fought this guy, I must have fought him like once or twice and completely forgot about him. Man! That has just rocked my Pokemon world. Okay, finish it off with a quick- Ow! Oh. Ass. <laughs> I was hoping I'd finish that off, but, well, there you go, you're dead now. Oh, youngster Calvin. You weird, weird person. I had no idea that he was another shorts lover. <laughs> That's your policy, is it, youngster Calvin? Fair enough, standing in that little ledged area that people can only get to if they really want to. I wonder how many people just bypassed him. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, suffering a bit from a uh, bit of a cold. Hopefully get rid of that next few days. Okay, moving on. Let's keep heading down Route 3, see where this takes us. Oh, I think this is... Yep. Eek, did you touch me? No, 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 no. I'm not getting dragged into this. Did not touch you at all. Jesus. Oh, and she's got Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff again. Famous from the TV series, she's the annoying pink ball that sings and sends people to sleep and then draws on their faces. While she doesn't have a use marker to draw on faces attack, she does no sing, so hopefully... Oh, excellent. 
is paralysed, which is great. But hopefully, she won't use Sing and send friend to sleep. It's so annoying when your Pokémon are asleep, because then you've got to wait or switch out. And uh, ooh, oh, thank God. Ah, oh, thank you. Well, I don't know how Sing can miss, because I mean it's. Sound waves, but then again, we are in the Pokemon universe where things might all be computer programs. <gasps> what if it's not just the Pokemon that are computer programs? What if this is all just like the Matrix? Like when the final Pokemon game comes out, you wake up and you're just this kid who's been plugged into this machine this entire time and you go about your everyday life. Mind fuck. <laughs> yeah, as you saw there. We're heading towards Mount Moon. We're on to Route 4 now, which I believe heads into Mount Moon just up there. Yep, there it is. Saw it there. You tripped over a Geodude. I tell you, if you tripped over a Geodude in real life, it would probably give you a serious uppercut. Because it's got fucking fists made of stone. <laughs> anyway, I think there's some interesting stuff in this Pokemon Center. What do you have to say? Team Rocket being used. Team Rocket are essentially like a terrorist organization, which is again kind of dark. I know it was Pokemon games were released kind of before all that, but... Hmm. Strange parable to make. Well, what's this bald guy doing? What's he selling? Can't deal just for you. A Magikarp for five... Okay. Now I was wondering, and I think I'm going to go for it, yeah. I've paid an outrageous 500. I'm not going to use the money for anything else. And I know I'm going to get one eventually, so I might as well have got one now. And I have. And it's a female, so... I'm going to name her... Karen. <laughs> and so now... How oh, lovely, it doesn't give refunds, so you can't sell it back. <laughs> so now I have Karen. The, uh... <laughs> it's a gentle nature. That's gonna be fantastic when it evolves. <laughs> Karen, the gentle-natured Magikarp. Which is great. I didn't... I completely forgot about this guy as well. And, of course, knows the immortal move Splash. Just flops and splashes around without having any effect. Splash does nothing. You're far better using Splash up in the PB department. And going with struggle, because at least then you'll do some <laughs> do some damage. But that's great, because now I've got... My Pokémon team's coming together quite nicely. Yeah. And we're here at Mount Moon. I think that's a great place to end. So join us next time when we venture forth into Mount Moon.